Frontiers of Pandora is a massive world with an abundance of activities. This also makes it pretty easy to get lost and miss the essentials, things you need to know to get the most out of your adventures, from tracking down the rarest resources in the game, to doubling your yields, dramatically boost your damage and survival capabilities. My name is 4M and this guide covers the most important things you need to know to better prepare for your adventures ahead. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Everybody loves free skill points, as you're going to need plenty of these to maximize your build, increase your damage and survival capabilities. During your adventures, you will come across plenty of these Tarsu saplings, which are plants hidden in plain sight, which usually can be detected with your Navi powers. If you see this blue circle, that means you have one of them nearby, and if you press and hold your Navi power, you can usually spot them. When you interact with them, you will get a free skill point to use for future upgrades. When exploring the beautiful world of Pandora, you might have already realized that fall damage is a thing, and unfortunately, from certain heights, death is inevitable. Well, this is not entirely true, as if you find the right plants, you can break your fall entirely, preventing any type of fall damage. This specific plant is called the Shade Leaf Cane, which you can find across Pandora, this is the first place we jumped from, while the secondary was much higher without any fall damage. Even better, a little bit to the east of the Kinglore Forest, you will find the Gassamer Lakes. If we check out this place, right here, you will find an ancestor skill called Soft Landing. This skill allows you to press crouch right before hitting the ground to basically reduce any fall damage by 50%. This will come in pretty handy if you don't have any plants in the surrounding area which can break your fall. If you want to find the best quality materials in Frontiers of Pandora, you sometimes need certain weather conditions. For example, for nightleaf trees, the best quality can be harvested during rainy days. So the big question is, how do I make it rain? We currently have a drizzle going on, which you can see at the bottom right of the screen. But if you want to manipulate weather, you basically want to find one of these campfires to pass time at a camp, as this will basically manipulate time and weather. See, now it's dusk and cloudy, so we no longer have rain going on. Well, you want to keep doing this to maybe make it nighttime or even force a thunderstorm to pop up. Be noted that sometimes it can take a couple skips before you find the conditions you're looking for, but eventually they will pop up, so just be patient. This, however, is not essential to get your hands on the best quality resources in the game, which I cover in my complete exquisite farming guide, which you can find at the top right of the screen. So let's get back to that nightleaf tree with the best quality when it's raining. You primarily want to focus on this specific message as this overrides the chances of finding top tier exquisite materials. So we basically want to make our way to the north of the Kinglore Forest and search around the Blackwater Basin. So now you would say it's not raining and it's not night, so the nightleaf tree won't have its best quality. So let me prove you wrong. If we press and hold our Navi powers right now and inspect one of the trees right here, you can see that this one still has superior quality. Definitely be sure to keep your eyes open for those shining or golden glow plants, as these usually come with the best quality in the game. Especially if you get additional feedback from the mini game, find it a little bit more difficult to harvest them, you will most likely have an exquisite quality gather. Along the ridge right here, we've got a couple more. So if we press and hold with our Navi powers, see, we get a couple more exquisite quality branches. A pristine harvest without rain, still getting top tier quality. I'm currently standing at the Fallen Hunter Navi camp and right in front of us, we have two crimson mushrooms, one of regular quality and also one of exquisite. So how about we make this even better by doubling the rewards of this plant? Go to your skill tab and check out the maker skill tree as right here, you can pick up a skill upgrade, skillful gatherer, which doubles the amount of cooking ingredients earned from gathering. So if you use the Navi powers, you already know that it's gonna be an exquisite harvest while after finishing the mini game, see, we actually get two instead of one. This allows you to gather cooking ingredients so much easier to craft top tier dishes. As you can see right here, we have a 35% stealth damage bonus for almost a full hour. Combining certain ingredients allow you to make the best dishes in the game, for which I already made an ultimate cooking guide also to be found at the top right of the screen. 
for some of the best dishes in the game, you also have to hunt for specific animals. So you're probably wondering, do clean kills matter? Honestly, nobody cares, as this will also not have an impact on the quality of the items gathered. Right in front of us, we have a small group of bladehead wildlife. If we expect them with our Navi powers, you can see that they will have exquisite materials. This creature is way above my level, so I won't have enough damage to one-shot it for a clean kill on its weak spot. With multiple hits, it's also not gonna be a merciful kill, so I didn't take any of the two hunting boxes, while still I get exquisite quality resources when harvesting this creature, because the quality of it was already predetermined when this creature spawned in and we expected it with our Navi powers. Right here you can see the exact same when hunting for some viper wolves. These already have superior quality and even without performing a clean kill, we still get the exact same quality as shown with our Navi powers. What I think is an essential tip to target farm specific wildlife or resources is to manipulate their respawns. I'm currently hunting some viper wolf for their superior meat a little bit west of the Sunshine Valley lab. If we fast travel to this location and pass time at the campfire, we will basically reset the spawn of these creatures. So if you want to farm a large batch of meat, well, this is going to be the most efficient way to do so. So if we fly to the same part of the forest, press and hold our Navi powers, you can see some new tracks of the Viper Wolf, so we can basically keep hunting them until we have enough resources. And the same counts for respawning plants. Remember that tip I gave you earlier to double the yield? Well, if you combine these tricks, you'll be able to stack up on an insane amount of resources in no time. It's also important to understand how you can get the most out of crafting, how you can get the highest level items with the most damage or armor values. So right here we have the blueprint for a Kingler Queen Sting. Nothing too fancy, while if we throw in an exquisite type of item as crafting resource, it will have around 50 damage. While if we upgrade it to an exquisite one, the damage will be almost 60. My current arm guard has 64 HP, recently crafted while I got my hands on even better resources. So if we throw in a exquisite blade head heavy height, which we gathered recently, it will actually give us 50 HP. Combine that with a skill bark and the total will be 74, with 50% bonus HP, 3% stealth and melee resistance. While for my waistcloth, I currently have one with 26 HP and recently found this superior lionberry fiber, which basically gives us 30. Even though it's only a fine craft, small upgrades like these can dramatically boost your performance, increase your survivability and damage in combat. Be sure to check out your mods from time to time, as you will find these more often than you think. So I recently found this 6 damage assault rifle with some standard mods, 5% RDA damage. Well, if we check out these right here, the damage is much higher, especially for weak spots. I think this is an amazing upgrade. Well, we could also increase the magazine capacity. Normally, the standard magazine size is 30, while right now we have 40. So I would say a pretty nice upgrade. Talking about a nice damage boost, you should always have certain dishes at your disposal to eat right before battle as these can dramatically boost it even further. With a fury bonus, we'll basically scale up your damage by another 35% and these are the basic tier items. Combine them with a secondary exquisite resource and this will give you some top tier stacks with a pretty long duration. If we quickly check out the Hunter's Guide and go to the Wildlife tab, this is where you will find the Cloaked Panther, of course, after you've discovered it. But these will drop meat that will increase your damage by 45%. So the further you progress in the game, the higher these damage bonuses will become. Since we're talking about some major boosts, plants with a hearty bonus will dramatically increase your maximum HP for a very long time if combined with the right ingredients. Even better, you can permanently increase your HP if you come across the right plants in the wild. Just like the Tarshu sapling, which gives you free skill points talked about earlier in this video, the bell sprigs can be interacted with to permanently boost your HP. Increase the value by three or more each time you interact with one. 
So if you want to efficiently farm permanent HP boosts, I recommend you to mark the spot on your map, call in your Ikran to reach them super fast and take them one by one. I definitely recommend you to combine this farming with Tarsu saplings as this can make your character very powerful in a short amount of time. All right, so there you have it. Essential tips and tricks you need to know to get the most out of your adventures in Frontiers of Pandora. If you found this video helpful, please do hit that like button as you have no idea how much you helped the channel with it. Already very much appreciate it. And yeah, if you have more questions or video suggestions, do leave them in the comments down below. I'm always happy to help. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as plenty more guides are coming your way. Right now though, it is 4 a.m. out, so I wanna wish you an awesome day. I'll Check you out in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace.